With this, let us now move to the main course of, of, of the day, which was, of course, integration and inclusion. Last year, uh, around these dates, the President and I we were struggling to explain to many skeptics the meaning of the European way of life. By the way, uh, those who were skeptical about the term at the time now have become the major defenders of the term. I close the parenthesis. But if there were a subject that could be the embodiment of the European way of life is integration and inclusion. This is what defines us. This is at the heart of what we stand for. In Europe, no one should be left aside. Protecting the most vulnerable in our midst is a core task. Health care and welfare systems should be able to be accessed by everybody. Everybody should have equal opportunities. And um, as our society and labor markets evolve, it means that we need to bring in anyone to share on the benefits of our society prosperity and cohesion. The effective integration of uh, uh, migrants legally staying in the EU and people, EU citizens with a migrant background is crucial. It's crucial for our cohesion, for our society, for our prosperity. And beyond this, integration is key also for the, um, not only for the people concerned, but for the rest of us. This is a win-win situation. And um, we want to help our societies and economies thrive. We need to support everyone who is part of our, of our uh, society, who lives next to us, with us. But I also want to make clear that inclusion should be at the same time both a right and a duty. In reality, there are two parties involved in integration and inclusion, the migrants and the receiving society. And it is the interaction between the two that will determine the direction and the ultimate outcome of the integration process. Both need and deserve our support to get this right. Commissioner Johansson, in a way, will expand in more detail about the content of each of the actions that we envisage. But let me say that we are mainly targeting uh, four uh, work streams key for integration namely education and training, jobs, healthcare, and housing. Education and training means that people who need to settle in new environments, thrive and contribute, should be given access to schools, museums, cultural centers, sport, sport fields, and can be clearly identified as places where community building happens. In every European city, in every European village, there are families and neighbors that meet and interact around education and training facilities. And this is where we need to work. Young people at risk, more than anybody, needs fair access to education, culture, youth, sport. This is the best way to contribute to the, preve the prevention of radicalization and a promotion of cohesion. Because it is integration and inclusion that can help us find xenophobia, exclusion, radicalization, and us versus them narratives. We need to build mutual respect and foster a migrant sense of belonging. And whilst I'm keen to point out that there is no automaticity as some want us to believe, or to make us believe, between migration and extremism. We have to admit that there, are, that there are and remain risks that extremist organizations prey on the vulnerable and exploit voids left by public services and community structures. And this is our job. Our true job is that no one should be seen vulnerable, excluded. Our job is to fill these voids, and this is what we're doing today. When it comes to funding, uh, we can do more in the next seven years because 
we have many more instruments and tools than in the current uh, uh, programming period. We have not only the traditional asylum and migration funds, but we also have European Social Fund, we have the European Regional Development Fund. We can establish stronger synergies, and Commissioner Johansson and I worked with our colleagues to make sure that this uh, uh, reinforced funding uh, that we'll have in the seven years to come is something that can be used in partnership with member states and regional communities. Regional communities and local communities are important because integration always happens bottom up, not up top down. You need to integrate in a local community, in a community where people can stand by you, where you can make a difference. All integration is local, and this is where the best ideas occur. Not far from here in Brussels, in Krynem, there is a Krynem football club of amateur football players. And they managed, with our help, with Erasmus Plus funding, to bring together a fantastic program of integration for refugees and migrants. It was their idea, and we were particularly happy that at the EU level we could support and bring it to life. These are the examples that we need to be emulating and promoting across Europe. Together, we can build this future based on access and opportunities for all. This, I repeat, is an idea that goes at the heart of the European way of life. I committed to use the cross-cutting portfolio attributed to me by the President precisely to promote a comprehensive approach when it comes to these issues. And I'm delighted that with the valuable help of Ilva Johansson, we can present today this very ambitious package. Thank you.